So the question I have for you is, how are you preparing for those larger ticket items that are going to be coming up in your child's future? Whether it be weddings, whether it be college, uh, maybe their first car, sports, travel teams, whatever the case may be. How are you preparing for those larger ticket items? Are you just planning on working a little bit harder when the money is needed? Uh, are you going to take out student loans and take out loans in order to fund this? I wanted to walk you through the reason why I opened up a custodial account or a brokerage account for my child in order to pay for these larger ticket items in the future as they come up. And so the first thing that you have to do is determine a game plan. Let, let, we, we have to determine, one, what are going to be those larger ticket items? How much is it, are they going to cost? How much time do we have before we reach those uh, uh, or before we reach that time where we need that money? And then we're going to work backwards and plug it all in an investment calculator to determine how much money we need to invest on a monthly basis. So for me, I was worried about four different things. I was worried about his first car, a wedding, a uh, his college, the money that he's going to use for college, and then finally, I want to help my son with a down payment for a home. So as you can see here on this slide, I have different dollar figures for each of those items. Some other examples are, yeah, again, maybe you might foresee your child being on a sports travel team or, you know, in cheer and music and arts, whatever the case may be. And so, again, maybe you want to put a dollar figure towards some of those items and then ask yourself how much time or when do you need that money? And so that it leads me into the second question. Uh, determine the amount of time you have. Now, as you can see, for those four different items, each of those are typically going to happen at a different time. Uh, for my son in his first car, that typically happens somewhere between 16 and 18 years old. For college, that's going to be when he turns 18. For a wedding, somewhere around 23 to 28, maybe 30 years old. Uh, for a down payment on the home, it could be something similar. After he gets out of college, so 25 to 30, gets a good career, can afford it, um, that's where that's going to be. So you have to determine how much time you have. And so once you see at what age they need, then you need to take into account at what age they currently are and subtract that off. And that's going to be the runway that you have in order to invest that money to get it to the dollar amount that you need by the time that you need it. So let's go over here to this investment calculator. Um, I actually already have it pulled up. Let's go over here to this investment calculator and determine how to start figuring out some of these numbers. So the first thing that you're going to ask yourself is, how much money do I have to invest today? Uh, maybe you might have some money in a savings account. Maybe a birthday or Christmas might just happen and your child has $500, $200, $1,000 that you can put into this investment account on day one. If that is the case, you're going to put that in at the starting amount. For me, I started my child's brokerage account on the day he was born. And at that time, I didn't have any money. So I started that money or I started his account at $0. So for me, I put in $0. Let's do the example of college, and I need $40,000 by the time my son turns 80, or, 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 oh my God, I need $40,000 by this time my son turns 18 years old. So for me, uh, for the amount of years I have, I'm going to do 18, because my child, I started when my child was just born, and again, he's not going to need it till he's 18 years old. You have to ask yourself, when do you need the money, how old is your child now, and what is that difference? And that is going to be the years that you put there. Now, uh, you, you don't have, I guess you could put in 18 and a half. You could do years. But on these investment calculators, a lot of them will go by whole numbers and don't really go by a uh, fraction. So, you know, you can't be 18 years and six months or 15 years and four months. you got to do 15 or 16. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier for the calculator and when it's generating the numbers that you need it to generate. The next question is, what is going to be your, your, your rate of return? And so I'm going to show you a couple ETS that you can use, but typically you want to use somewhere around 10 to 12%. 12% is somewhat of the norm. 10% is a little bit conservative. You can play with that, uh, to your liking and, and, and do, so, do a number that is comfortable with you. Maybe you split the difference and do 11%. Again, play with this on your own. Uh, go to calculator.net. And, uh, and put these numbers in. So the next thing that we're going to do is, again, I need $40,000 by the time he turns 18. So let's put in $25 a month, and let's see where that gets us. So as you can see here, $25 a month for 18 years at 12%, it only gets me $17,000. I need 40. So I clearly need to put in a little bit more money. Let's put in $50 a month. I am almost there. Um, I'm at $35,000 in 18 years. 
The other thing that I want you to take into consideration is I want you to be a little bit over the amount of money that you truly need. The reason that I say that is who knows, heaven forbid, come year 18 when you're ready to pull that money, we're going through a Russia-Ukraine similar similar war at that time, and the market pulls back, or any other type of uh, a pullback in the market. You don't want to play it so close that if a market pulled back, you don't have enough money to do whatever expense that you wanted to do. Because the ideal of this account is to basically make your life stress-free at the time where you need the money. You need $40,000, you have $55,000 in that account ready to rock and roll. You don't have to work any extra hours. You don't have to do anything different. You just sell off your, your, your equities, your stocks, your ETS, and then you put down that cash for whatever item you need to purchase. So again, as you can see here, $50 is only going to give me $35,000 in 18 years. So let's bump this up to $75 a month. So uh, at, a uh, at a monthly contribution of $75 a month in 18 years, it will give me a balance of $52,000. That is $12,000 over the $40,000 that I need. And so this makes me feel a lot comfortable and, 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 and excited to basically know that if I do $75 from the time that he is born to 18 years old, I'm, my account is going to be somewhere around $52,000. And so now what you would need to do for your particular example is, again, go to Investment Calculator, go to Google, Yahoo, type in Investment Calculator, or you can just literally go to calculator.net. I'll put it in the description down below for you so you can just click it. And I need you to play with these numbers to uh, give yourself an idea as to how much money you need to put away on a monthly basis in order to reach the goals that you want to reach when that time comes. So let's go back to this PowerPoint real quick. There's a couple things that I want to walk you through. So... Opening up, opening up a brokerage account or a custodial account is actually quite simple. It is not as hard as, as one would think. Um, I, 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 I play with this word custodial account, but for me, it is actually a brokerage account with my name on it. A custodial account has a little bit different rules, and depending on which state you live in, the money is automatically given to the, um, I was about to say the guardian, but uh, it's not, the, the, the term is not guardian. I'm going blank here. And it's not dependent, but it's basically the dependent. But um, I, I'm going blank. You have to excuse me here. But uh, on a custodial account, once your child or whoever that account is truly for turns a certain age, it's from 18 to 21, dependent on the state. Each state is a little bit different. That money is automatically uh, uh, in that person's name. And then I, like the parent, wouldn't have any control of it. And I don't want that to be the case. I want to have control of this account. I want to teach my son the financial tools that he is need in order to manage this funds uh, in order to be successful in life. I plan to be, or, or this account, um, by the time he's 20, 25 years old, is going to be well in excess of $100,000. And I just don't want to give this money to him if he is not prepared to take on that type of responsibility. So I use the term custodial account, but I need you to understand uh, in the future, I do honestly mean a brokerage account. But it is it is 100 percent geared towards my son. So all the money that I put in here is for my son. I opened up another brokerage account for my daughter that is going to be born in, in June. And then I have a, a brokerage account for my wife and I. So three different brokerage accounts, each with their own uh, responsibility and for their own person. And so uh, the next question is, how are you going to fund this account and what is going to be your desired contribution? Because if you remember on that investment calculator, it asked you how much you're going to be putting in. Are you going to be putting in $75 per month? Are you going to be putting in $1,000 per year? Each of that or, or the frequency and how you put that money in does play a slight role in the return or the rate of return that you're going to be getting. And so you need to determine how you're going to be funding this account. For me, I do $100 a month. I make it very simple. I have an automatic uh, deposit from my bank account into this account. And on the 5th, the 6th of every single month, $100 is deposited in the Elliott's uh, brokerage account for me to basically go out and purchase the ETFs that I'm interested in purchasing for his account. The next thing that you're going to want to do is determine which type of ETF or if you're going to use mutual funds, uh, what investment vehicle are you going to use in order to get the returns that uh, you are looking for. And so uh, if I take you over here to Fidelity, this is where I have my son's account. When you pull up particular ETFs, uh, each uh, ETF is going to kind of show you the performance, the past performance uh, uh, of the ETF. And so this is going to give you a gauge as to what type of rate of return you can use when plugging into that investment calculator. So as you can see here, if you just take a, a S&P 500 ETF, which has the 500 companies in the S&P 500, 
over the last 10 years, it has provided a 14% rate of return. And what that basically means is year one, it did, let's just say, 7%. Year two, it did 15%. Year three, it did 4%. Year uh, uh, five, it did 14% exactly. But whatever the case may be, it's not always 14 But when you average all of those percents up for the last 10 years, it has averaged to be 14% over that 10-year period. As you can see here, over the last year, it did 16%. The last three years, 18%. I honestly like to use this 10-year period. It's a big enough window for me that it gives, enough, uh, it, it gives enough volatility as well as a lot of ups and downs to really be able to get an idea as to how this particular ETF is going to perform over a long period of time. And so finally, the final point that I want to make to you about this is hopefully this uh, brokerage account is a way for your child and a way for you to teach your son or your daughter financial literacy. It is so important. As well as if you see, I would like you to take that. If you put $100 into your brokerage account, do this if you pull up that investment calculator. Put $100 a month, do 12%, and do 40 years. And be uh, uh, shocked as to how much money that would be in 40 years if you do $100 a month. Um, this is how we change generations. And so uh, I hope this is a tool. I plan to use my brokerage account uh, with my son as well as my future daughter as a way just to teach financial literacy, give them uh, the opportunity to be able to ask questions, learn things under my household so that when they go out into the real world on their own, they have the tools and the knowledge in order to be successful. And so finally, here is a quick breakdown of Elliot's uh, a brokerage account. Uh, as of this video, as of Friday, he was at $1,500, $1,600. For this particular month, I invested $100. I personally do $100 a month in his account. He was down $15. Uh, a lot of that is to do with the geopolitical issues that we have going on, the Russia-Ukraine war, things of that nature. Uh, and so, again, the value gain in the percent, he was down 0.01% from this time last month. Um, uh, March is a big month for, for dividends. However, I have sh I'm shooting this video before his dividends are paid out. So you will see his dividends from or, or in the next month's video. But uh, it's, it's very exciting for him because last year he did not get any dividends uh, in Q1 of 2021. So this is going to be he started receiving dividends uh, in Q4 of 2021. I changed a little bit of his investing strategy in his account. Um, the next goal for his account is to get to twenty five hundred dollars uh, this Russia. Again, Russia, Ukraine war had really pulled him back. He was doing quite well. Um, but, you know, the total stock market as a whole is down and uh, I'm not upset about it. We got 18 years in this account, uh, 20 years in this account. So uh, this is all just buying opportunity to be able to see that upside at some future date. But he reached a thousand dollars in his account on April 1st of 2021. And again, his next goal is uh, twenty five hundred dollars, hopefully here in the near future. But with that being said, thank you very much. Look out for other videos. Um, I, did a, I did a video this month on uh, IRAs, and then uh, in uh, on the remaining part of this month, I'm going to be overviewing my crypto portfolio next week, and then the taxable brokerage account for my wife and I the, that following week thereafter. So look forward to seeing you at a future video. Thank you so much, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.